Hi folks, Mr. Teslonian back here again. We're taking you through step by step on how to build your own Wimshurst electrostatic generator. And today what I want to show you is how to build a very large one. This is an 18 inch in diameter circle right here that you see. I had the local glass shop tape a uh, piece of plexiglass I bought from the local hardware store and turn it into a nice circle here. And I've got three of these made just in case I damage one. I'd suggest doing the same thing if you're going to make this. Uh, you, plexiglass can be a little finicky when you drill holes or cut or do anything to it. So I have three or four made just in case. Uh, and a couple of things you see here. We have a wooden dowel uh, drive rod that we're going to use. That's an insulator material. So this will be the upper drive rod probably uh, for the, the discs to spin on. You also see two brass rods here. These are actually going to be uh, our combs that are going to pick up the electrons off the disc, the smaller brass rod that you see here. And this one here is going to be our discharge rod. We're actually going to have our little brass balls on the top of this as our discharge rods. And I have another aluminum rod here just in case uh, I think that aluminum might work better for my combs. We're going to test it out and see how it does. Uh, over here what I have are the brass balls that are going to go on top of those uh, little brass uh, doweling rods. They are threaded at the end, so we're going to have to solder these together onto the end of the rods. We have two large ones here for our discharge rod, and we have two small ones here that we're going to place over the ends of the combs. So there you go, and you can get these at any local hardware store, just search around. My hands are dirty because they're covered in uh, epoxy from gluing one of these discs to get, uh, together and putting the laminates on it. Another couple things that you see here that we have are a couple slip collars with uh, Allen wrench heads to lock them onto the drive shafts. That'll help hold our pulleys and all the stuff to it and keep them in place to make sure our bearings spin right. And you're gonna need a couple different sizes depending on what drive shaft diameters that you choose. And once again, we just have a larger one here for the larger drive rod that's gonna be down in the lower pulley drive wheels, these ones here. So then we have two different kinds of plastic smaller pulley wheels. This is one that I have here that I picked out of a, uh, that dishwasher we turned into the gasifier. It had a bunch of these little roller wheels in it and they're plastic so I think this is probably the wheel we're going to actually mount directly to the center of this plastic disc here and this will be our disc drive gear which is perfect because it's a nice small uh, pulley, really small so it'll give us a high RPM. Uh, the second set of pulleys that we have here or bearing wheels Another synthetic bearing wheel here, it's actually got a bearing in the center of it as you can tell, is actually from uh, sliding glass doors. Uh, you can get this also at the hardware store. This here we're going to use, uh, if this doesn't work for the center, we're going to try that out on one. We'll probably end up using this. So that might end up being our center bearing drive shaft and I'll show you that as I kind of get going on the project. Uh, a couple of the other things that we have here, if I remove all these drive rods, and a couple, uh, you can see here, I've pulled the metal frame off of this lower drive pulley. We're going to need two of those, and they'll actually be hooked together like this to give us two drive pulleys down at the bottom. Let um, me go ahead and remove those from the table, and some of these things. Alright, so real quick what we're going to do here is show you just how to put this all together in a manner that's going to allow you a perfect circle. So let me set this piece of plexiglass here in the center and kind of take you through how you're going to mark this out and put all your little discs on here, how to get a perfect center on it. What I've done is I've taken the piece of cardboard that came uh, with the plexiglass. You can see a bunch of lines here and I've got a shadow from the camera obviously right on the shot here. Uh, just the way the wind's blown today is the only way I can do this. And what I started out with, if I take this out from underneath there, is I actually set this piece of plexiglass down on the cardboard so that two of the edges were dead level with the outside two edges of the cardboard box. And then you can see a straight line drawn all the way across here and another one all the way across there where the actual plexiglass didn't meet the edge of the box, creating a perfect square uh, instead of having a circle. And then I marked around the piece of plexiglass with my pen, giving my circle onto the plexiglass or onto the cardboard itself. Now if I remove that, here's how it works. You'll start out with your square measure with your ruler all the way across right there. I have one sitting here to show you. Uh, anyway, so you're going to measure from this point here on your box to that point there on the square that you drew on the box. Find a halfway point with your ruler and mark it. And do the same to all four sides at first. Start out with your four east-west uh, positions, north, south, east, west. And then once you've got those, you're going to take your ruler. And maybe you can see this here in the shot. There's a line going from this tip here 
all the way to that tip there. And it makes another box. You can actually see another square drawn inside of the system. That's your first line. Now, once you've measured from these two points, let's go over here. Once you've measured from these two points, drawn a line, find exact center on that. Don't go to exact center on the outside square for your next lines. You only do that for your first four. Uh, so you're gonna find your center and that's right here. Once again, you're gonna go all the way around and do that to every spot four times. And then you're gonna draw your lines across those. Now your second set of lines here, if you can see from my two finger points, you draw a line from that same position here now to the new line you've just drawn. This is a little hard to see since I've already got it all drawn up. Uh, so you draw from here to here, you find your center once again, and you'd go around and do that. You can see the line here, center, line here, center, and so on all the way through the system here. And then you'd find your centers, draw your lines, and once again, you're gonna come back up, and now this will be a little harder to see. There's an actually a little line going straight across from here to here. And that's actually from our center marks now. It'll give us a dead center once again if we measure that, and we'll mark our lines. So there we go, that's how I got a perfect circle. And if you notice, all the lines crossed almost perfectly right here in the center, giving me a, a, a precision point to drill at, also giving me 32. Uh, individual lines that I can put my laminates on, my aluminum plates, my induction plates across this. Uh, so now what I've done here, once you get this all drawn out, make sure your lines come out just a little bit further so you can see them past the edge of the plexiglass. This plexiglass is clear so it comes up really nice. And if I set that back on top of there, I can just set down my ruler across these lines and draw on the plexiglass all the lines I need or I can just set it on there and start gluing my pieces directly into place and leaving that there until I've gotten all my uh, laminates into place and now you've got it into position. Uh, so here's what it looks like on the next step. Once you've done all that and you've drawn it out, this is your next piece of plexiglass. It looks a lot like that. You've got 32 lines all the way around. You want an even number of plates on one of these. You don't want an odd number. Uh, so we've got that all the way around, and the next step is to do this. Now I've got some dirt that's gotten on this. I dropped it a couple times in the wind here. But uh, these are actually the aluminum pieces that I've cut out from an aluminum uh, no trespassing sign. Now one of the issues with those signs is they have a light, light coating on the shiny back side of the sign. The actual painted sides underneath where the glue is. Uh, now you have to kind of sand these a little bit of sandpaper. Uh, you want to use like 150 grit, 120 grit sandpaper, something with a finer grit to take off that really light coating. The brushes will do it over time, but just to kind of speed up the process, use some sandpaper on those. And I've taken some clear epoxy here, and I've epoxied each one of these plates initially on there to get them into place. And you can see that's a nice 32 uh, laminate design right there. It's an 18 inch disc. And it's ready to go now to drill our center hole, put our bearing or our drive pulley on there, and we're going to start working on the frame to put this all together. Uh, until next time, I hope you enjoy. This is Mr. Thessalonian in the Thessalonian Man Show.